All right. Well, the real world seems to keep overlapping with things that we're talking about in class. And uh, as I sit here on January 31st, uh, there's talk of a potential short squeeze in silver, which uh, we'll talk about in class, which I don't think will be successful. It's very different trying to orchestrate a short squeeze in a commodity uh, as opposed to doing it in a stock that has unlimited shares and uh, a bunch of other factors. There's a big difference between silver and GameStop stop stock. However, I do want to talk about a previous uh, silver trade. And back in 1979, 1980, uh, the Hunt brothers, uh, were, who were uh, heavily involved in the energy market. I think they used to own the, or may, maybe they still own the Kansas City Chiefs, but I think that they started the team as the Dallas Texans and then moved them to Kansas City. Uh, so they attempted to manipulate the silver market. And the price of silver was at six bucks an ounce, and they ran it up to about $50 an ounce. And they did this through a methodology known as cornering the market. Uh, and the way that they cornered the market was they actually went out and uh, got hold of as much physical silver as they could. This is reason number one that I don't think a short squeeze attempted by a lot of retail traders will work out uh, in the same way that it worked out for the Hunt Brothers, although it eventually was unsuccessful. Uh, but they, ma they made the price of silver run up from 6 bucks to $50 a share. Now, the silver futures contracts, they're quoted in per ounce increments. Uh, each contract represented 5,000 ounces of silver. So you could get control of $175,000 worth of silver for about $30,000 based on the margin. So... Um, the the short squeeze that I think is being attempted by um, you know that that maybe is being attempted maybe not uh, involves buying the SLV ETF as opposed to the futures contracts. There's one big difference there. Um, so you know you might not have uh, the same impact on the futures. It may run the ETF up a little bit, although the ETF apparently the it did ten times normal volume on the Friday before this weekend and didn't run up uh, above new all-time highs. We'll see how things go on Monday. Uh, the big thing with using the futures contract is this bottom bullet point here. Uh, the contract may result in physical delivery of silver, which means if you have a short position in the silver futures contract, you got to go out and find silver to deliver against the contract. And what the Hunt brothers were doing was they bought a bunch of silver futures, but then they also purchased and stored um, physical silver. So they kept it off the market, which, uh, and they eventually controlled about half of the world's silver supply. Uh, what's kind of cool about this story is, you know, these, these are guys from down in Texas and they, uh, my understanding is, and you got to figure out what's an urban legend and not, but my understanding is uh, just to, uh, to stay ahead of authorities and everything else, uh, they put a bunch of this silver in some jumbo jets and sent it over to Switzerland, I believe, for storage. So they, uh, they got it out of the United States. And they actually, because they owned ranches, they had ranch hands uh, with rifles. Uh, they had a little contest. Who's the best shot? And I think they took four of the best shots from their ranch hands, uh, gave them rifles, and had them fly on the planes over to, on the planes that they had chartered over to Europe to, you know, guard the silver. Uh, it, it almost sounds like something out of a movie. Uh, so, you know, straight up supply demand, they were able to take about half the world's silver off the market. Silver is used uh, not just in jewelry, but in a lot, there's a lot of industrial uses as well. Uh, so this started to increase the price. Uh, at one point, and keep in mind, this is $1980. This is real money back then. Uh, unrealized profits were around $3.5 billion. And, but eventually what happened was the regulators and the futures exchange, the commodity exchange, uh, took action, which, uh, which is similar to what happened with GameStop last week. And, and I've told people, I've told students, and in the GameStop video that I did, I've talked about how 
Uh, these things have happened in the past. Well, here's a good example of it. Uh, the CFTC, kind of like the Securities Exchange Commission, but for the futures markets, um, they imposed liquidation only, meant that you could... Um, that, that you had to get out of trades. Uh, we were not going through the delivery process anymore. Positions needed to be exited as expiration approached, and people could not establish new positions. Uh, this means that the hunts had to sell their futures contracts and started to put uh, downside pressure on those. Uh, the exchange raised the margin requirement on silver. CFTC and the exchanges work pretty closely together. They raised the margin requirement on silver. The hunts received a margin call of 100 million bucks to cover the margin. They tried to sell their silver, uh, to sell bonds backed by the silver holdings. Nobody would buy those. Uh, they ended up with a unrealized loss of $1.7 billion. So after the margin call, uh, the CFTC wouldn't do anything to help out the hunts. Uh, they, uh, the, uh, there wasn't a, they avoided coll a collapse of the financial markets. Uh, this could have been a system-wide issue. Uh, there was a $1.1 billion line of credits to the hunts. They were fined $10 million for cornering the market. And two of the Hunt brothers actually had to declare bankruptcy at some point based on um, all of these shenanigans. So, you know, it, we... we had a situation where GameStop was cornered, I guess you could say, in a similar way, and all of a sudden the rules changed and everybody cried foul. Well, this that, that's part of the pattern behind these sorts of things. Uh, here's a cool chart that I found that I on silver. There's the the short squeeze. You can see that, and then silver came right back down to uh, much lower prices. So this has been attempted before. Now, what, what, what might you have done? Uh, you know, this is just, this is really for my students. If you had caught wind of this early, might you have bought silver futures? Uh, I actually, and I talked about this with GameStop, uh, I, if you were going to try to get involved in all of this, options would be a better way. I put more leverage, but you can also put up a risk controlled trade using uh, options. Uh, this is where I really want the folks in my classes who are traders to think. I don't want you to think about what are you doing silver? What's the secondary impact? Uh, and the secondary impact, uh, back in the 80s, we didn't have digital cameras yet. Film consumed silver. A lot of machinery consumed silver. You know, who was having to pay up more for the raw materials that consumed silver? You know, maybe take a short position in those industries because they were experiencing a disruption. Uh, is the price of silver goes up, uh, miners are going to try to get as much of this out of the ground as they possibly can. So, you know, which would increase their profits uh, because they, they kind of have a fixed cost around how much it costs for them to extract it from the ground. And they could use the, uh, the silver futures to lock in a price, but maybe uh, buying some of the miners as well. Uh, if they're in, in another idea that when, when we have discussions, I'm doing this as a recording without a discussion, but uh, one of the things that I try to extract from a class when, when, I'm talk, when I've talked about this in the past is uh, in the industry area, is there a substitute for silver? Now, I, I'm probably going to sound silly when I say this, so please, it's just a hypothetical, and I don't know anything about the metals markets, uh, what, about the production that they're used in, but let's say that Copper is a substitute for silver in certain ways. Well, maybe you buy copper with the with the expectation that uh, some production will shift from silver to copper, or consumption will shift from silver to copper, or from silver to gold. If silver becomes too expensive, uh, maybe people are buying gold jewelry instead of silver jewelry. But that's that's what I try to prompt in the class discussion around the other ideas. Um, I always like I like this. This was a full page ad that Tiffany's and Company who was a big consumer and seller of silver jewelry, uh, they, they, put this, uh, uh, they put this ad in the New York Times to complain uh, or to, to draw attention to what those bad guys from Texas were doing. So what was the uh, result of this event? Well, one, one result, one partial result was we got a cool movie. Uh, the, 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 this is the Dukes. 
uh, from trading places. They try to corner the orange market. Uh, and you know that that's part of the story behind trading places. There's some other real world things that feed into the movie, but I think the cornering the market part uh, um, definitely uh, grew right out of what the Hunt brothers tried to do in a different market. Uh, some other things, uh, the Hunts were playing by the rules that were put in place when they did the trades. This second bullet point is something that we're probably going to see uh, in the equity markets. We actually already saw some brokers change rules around trading certain stocks and a great movie about the markets that, um, that I've written some things up about in the past, Trading Places, uh, was made. So with that, I just wanted to show that there has been a historical attempt to corner the uh, corner the silver market in the past. It didn't end well. And in the next few weeks, or maybe just the next week, these things seem to happen very quickly. We're going to see if, uh, if it plays out well again. So there.